Welcome to part one of a three-part series on email marketing. In this series, I'm going to cover your email deliverability, your email copywriting, and overall conversion strategy. So if you're a business who collects emails from their leads, hint, that should be all of you. This series is gonna help you make more money, so I recommend you sticking around and watching the whole thing. In this first video, we're gonna be focusing on deliverability so that you never have to worry about your emails landing in spam again. This way, more people are actually going to read your emails and you're going to get more opportunities to make money. On the flip side, if your emails are currently landing in spam, you'll understand and know where to start looking so that you can correct it. Now, why focus on deliverability first? And the answer to that question is very simple. Because without good email deliverability, nobody's gonna read your emails. You could write the absolute best email that converts at 100%, but if it ends up in the spam box or ends up in the promotions folder, almost no one is going to see it and you're gonna make zero sales. So before we start getting into what actually goes into the email and how to actually use them to make sales, we wanna make sure we have our deliverability dialed in first. And to do that, there's really four main factors that we can focus on that are gonna affect your email deliverability. And I'm gonna list these in order of importance, meaning that the first one that I list is going to be the biggest impact on your deliverability. The first factor affecting your email deliverability is going to be your IP address reputation. This is the server address associated with the platform that you're sending from. And factor number two is gonna be your email address domain reputation. This is the domain that you're actually sending your email from. And then factor number three is your email subject line, which is fairly self-explanatory. And then finally, the fourth factor that we have affecting deliverability is the email content itself. And this could be things like the email sender name, the actual body copy, what you're writing in the email itself, and then any links, number of links, and then where those links are pointing to. Now let's break down each one in a little bit more detail. And like I said before, IP reputation is one of the biggest factors when determining your email deliverability. Now, when it comes to your IP address of the email servers that you are sending from, there's typically two types of servers. There's shared servers and then there's dedicated servers. Shared servers are gonna be what 99% of the people watching this video are going to be sending from. Basically what a shared server is, is when you sign up for an email service, something like a Kartra or a Constant Contact or a Get Response or something like High Level, basically what happens is you're sending from the same servers as everybody else who has an account with one of those services. And for most people who are sending in comparatively low volumes, this is completely fine. However, the risk of having a shared IP is that another user on the software could be absolutely spamming and scamming their list and thus hurting the reputation for everybody else who has an account. And it very well might be that you are not breaking any of the rules. However, another person who has an account on the same platform could be breaking every rule and their practices could harm you. And this is why when considering an email platform, you also want to look at how strict they are with their users. I know ActiveCampaign is someone who is very, very strict with all of their users for this very reason. If ActiveCampaign senses that you're sending anything spammy or scammy, they will close your account without notice to protect the rest of the users on their platform. Now, as you start sending more and more email and your business grows, a dedicated IP makes more sense. A dedicated IP is basically a server that you can buy from your email service provider where you are the only one sending from that IP address. You are the only one who controls the reputation of that particular IP address. And what this does, this insulates you from the other users on the platform. So that person who's spamming and scamming before is gonna have no impact on your IP address reputation. The only downside is that dedicated IPs typically cost a fair amount of money and they also require a lot of email sending before you even qualify for one. So if you're just starting out, this really isn't something you have to worry about yet, but it's something they just kind of put in the back of your mind, put it up on the shelf, so that as your business grows, this is something you might want to consider. And probably the second biggest factor in deciding whether or not your email goes to spam is your domain reputation. And the domain is basically just the at that your email comes from. And like your IP, there's actually two types of domains that you can send from. There is a shared domain and a dedicated domain. And most big box email service providers like MailChimp use a shared domain when sending. Basically what happens is you have you at your business.com and they send it via MailChimp.net or whatever their sending domain is. So technically it's not your dedicated domain sending the email, it's you borrowing the email sending domain of the big box provider. And like the IP address, if you have somebody else who has, let's say, a MailChimp account who's spamming and scamming, that puts your sending reputation at risk. So the best thing to do is set up a truly dedicated email sending domain on whatever email service provider you choose to go with. 
So now that we understand shared versus dedicated domains, let's look at the factors that are actually going to affect your email domain's reputation. Now, when it comes to your domain reputation, a lot of the same general rules of the IP will still apply. And besides being shared or dedicated, there's a few other factors affecting your domain's reputation. And those factors affecting your domain reputation are opens, replies, clicks, bounces, and then your complaints and your unsubscribes. Generally, when it comes to email opens, you want as many people to open the email as possible. This is gonna send a good signal to the email service provider that you're sending emails that people want to read. If you're sending emails that people want to read, the chances of them being spam or scam are very low, and thus more of your emails are going to get through. The next thing is going to be replies. Email was not made, email was not really uh, built as a mass broadcasting platform. Email was sent more of a one-to-one -one conversation. So the more one-to-one -one conversations that email service providers see you having, meaning you send an email, they reply, and then you reply back, the more of those volleys back and forth that they can see, that means it's gonna increase your domain reputation because you're having conversations with people the way that they intended email to be built. If you can give the email service providers more of what they want to see, they're generally gonna put more of you in the primary inbox. The next thing is clicks, right? You want people to click on your email because the act of clicking an email tells the email service provider that what you sent was helpful and it was something that they wanted to go see. And if you haven't put it together yet, there's this big kind of overarching theme that you want to give the email service providers what they want to see. And if you give them more of what they want to see, you're going to get a favorable result for yourself. And finally, when it comes to email bounces and then spam complaints and unsubscribes, you want to keep these to a minimum because again, when these happen, it's sending a negative signal to the email service providers. Basically, when you send an email to an address that is fake or invalid, it's basically telling the email service provider that, hey, this person didn't want to hear from you, so they gave you a fake address. Same thing if it's a spam complaint, like they're literally complaining to the email service provider that this is spam. And then unsubscribes, again, sends a signal to the ESP that says, hey, I don't want to hear from this person anymore. I don't like what they're sending me. So you want to keep those three things there to a minimum to keep your sending reputation at an all-time high. And this is also why you should clean your list, which we're gonna talk about in a later part in the series. Now let's hop into my computer and I'll show you how to maximize all of these deliverability factors so I don't end up in spam. All right, so we're here inside of the software that I use to send emails every single day. It's called Lead Vortex, and some of you might recognize it as a white label of high level. It's exactly what it is. So if you're on high level or another uh, white label of high level, you can pretty much follow this tutorial uh, click by click. But if you're on something like a MailChimp or a Get Response or an active campaign, you're gonna have to find these buttons inside of your own platform. But I promise you, most of the same functionalities are there. But if they're not, I recommend you trying out Lead Vortex in your business because we can help you. We do help small businesses organize their operations and organize their marketing. So self-promotion aside, let's hop in here. Let's talk about dedicated domain. I'm going to skip over the IP reputation because you generally don't have the ability to get a dedicated IP unless you're sending a ton of emails. You can do it with Lead Vortex, uh, but most people watching the video will not need a dedicated IP. If that's you, send me an email. We'll work something out. So we're going to skip IPs here for a moment and go write dedicated domains. So if you come here on Lead Vortex, you're gonna come into here settings, you're gonna come here into email services, and out of the box in this account, there is no dedicated domain. Basically what happens here is you're going to see the Lead Connector email system and you're gonna see the Tri Lead Vortex sending address. Now I have set up the Tri Lead Vortex agency address on my account on a dedicated domain. So you're only sharing that domain with users on the platform. That's typically how it's going to be set up. Now, if you're on a high level white label and you see the mg.messagesender.com, right? That's the default. Your agency provider has not set a thing up. That's bad. So that means that you're now sharing your email domain with, I think there's 3 million businesses using high levels backend now. And those, all those people are going to affect your sending reputation. So what you want to do is you want to see one that your agency took the time and they actually set up a dedicated agency email. If they want to put it on a dedicated domain, that's even better. But the next thing that you want to do as an account user is you want to actually set up your own dedicated domain. And again, not all email service providers do this, right? Some of them, I think MailChimp is one of the really big ones. I can't remember. You cannot set up a dedicated domain, or even if you do add your own domain, you're still sending over a shared domain. Uh, you can still end up in spam. However, on Lead Vortex and any other high level uh, white label, you can add your dedicated domain here. And inside of here on this top, you'll see dedicated domain. If you come down, 
you'll see no dedicated IP. Again, these are for people sending over 100,000 emails a month. It's probably not you if you're watching this video, but if it is, again, shoot me an email, we can work something out. Now we'll come over to here, we'll add our domain. And for this one here, for the demonstration purposes of this particular video, I'm gonna use my nonsensical domain. I probably couldn't get an email in inbox if I tried, but I'm going to show you the demonstration domain that I use for all of my tutorials. And for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using emailm.earshot.info. Again, it's a nonsensical demonstration domain. Do not try to send me an email there. I probably couldn't send an email out of here. This is probably burnt, but I use it for all of my demonstrations. So what you would do is you would put a normal email domain here. So if you're Joe's Plumbing, you would go at joesplumbing.com. On there, now High Level makes it really easy. You basically go to add and verify and what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you a number of DNS records. What you're going to do, if we hit continue here. Now on High Level, since I use Cloudflare, it's going to automatically add some of these DNS records. I'm gonna show you what they are here in a second. Now on high level, it's gonna automatically create a lot of these DNS records, but if you are setting up a dedicated domain on another platform, you may have to set up these, these records on your own. Essentially what these records are doing is they're authenticating your email address as valid to other email service providers. So if you're sending an email from here into a Gmail account, Gmail is gonna to check to see that you have these authentication records before they say, hey look, we're gonna serve this email to our user because we know that they have these special records and they are not spam. That's a non-technical explanation of what is going on. And of these records that you're going to have to add, this is going to be the most important one, is this DMARC record. I don't know what DMARC stands for, but this is what you need to have. And basically this DMARC is going to basically tell all of the other email service providers that you are legit. And if you haven't touched your email records since 20, since before 2023, you probably need to add this record into your email setup. This was a requirement, I think it was late 2023. Everybody is required to add it now or your emails will not deliver. So the top ones here I've already done or they've been done automatically. I wanna show you here, basically what we're going to do is we're gonna add this little DMARC record, log into my DNS settings. In this case, it is Cloudflare. We're gonna add a record, it basically comes into here. It's a text record. We uh, copy that DMARC over there, and then we come over to here, this little uh, DMARC one P equals none. We copy that, paste it in here, and then we go ahead and we hit save. And once that record is there, that's going to verify, and then we can go ahead and we're gonna have a dedicated email domain. And once we've verified all those records, you're basically gonna go green if you're using high level, and once that happens, you now have a dedicated domain and you're no longer working on an, a, a shared domain. Now let me show you a really quick way to increase your domain sending reputation. Now, normally to warm up and, and build the reputation of an email sending domain, you would have to basically send one to two emails a day, make sure that you get responses, make sure people open your emails, and basically it's something that just kinda has to build over time. When you register a new email domain, the email service providers have no idea who you are and they don't have any history on you, so you have to build up that good history to show them that you're not going to be a spammer or a scammer. Now, in the past, this has taken weeks or months and you basically have to manually send emails, but I'm on the screen now of a new tool called Warmbox, which is gonna help you warm that up automatically without having to send all those emails manually. So over here, we're actually gonna open up an account. I'll leave a link to it down below. Uh, but basically, once you open up an account, what Warmbox is gonna do, it's gonna send and receive emails and send all of those good signals to the ESPs, the email service providers automatically, so you don't have to do it yourself. Basically, to set that up, what you're going to do is you're gonna hit get started once you create your account, and you're going to use Mailgun. And this, again, this is gonna be pretty high level specific because I use high level, but you're gonna use Mailgun because Mailgun is the back end service provider of high level. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit next, and next, and then what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask you for your SMTP login. Now you're not going to put your email address login here. Instead, what you're going to do, again, if you're using high level, you're gonna go in here basically to your dedicated domain address here, and you're going to hit the three dots, and you go here to where it says SMTP settings. And on here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new SMTP user, and you're gonna call it Postmaster. It's going to be the login, and then you're gonna create a password. Again, a password, whatever you want your password to be. When that's done, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna hit create. And what that's gonna do is that is going to create your email login and password. So what you're gonna do then is take your login over here, come over to Warmbox, basically hit SMTP login is there. Use your password. First thing I wanna do is I wanna check the connection. What this is gonna do, it's gonna try to log in. If the connection works, you're good to go. 
since we created this 30 seconds ago, I'm not expecting anything to go wrong. And then once you see this little green bar here, it means the SMT connection test has succeeded. You're ready to move on. Now off camera, I had to wait about 10 minutes between when I created the SMTP user to when it actually uh, took over at Warmbox. So if it doesn't happen on the first shot, don't be alarmed. You probably just have to wait. Now, once this is actually all set up, we're gonna hit next. And what we're gonna do now, it's gonna give us the warm up options to start warming up the account. Again, you're gonna see it's gonna test the connection again. And basically what's gonna happen here is this is going to send one email today, two emails tomorrow, three emails the next day, four, five, six. And it's basically going to grow your email sending volume over time. And what it's gonna do, it's also going to reply back and forth to all these different emails that it's sending and, and unsending. Now, if you're on an absolute fresh email domain, I would recommend going through the grow. However, if you are already sending, if you're already sending emails and you have some sort of a history with your email sending domain, you just wanna warm it up a little bit more, I would send the randomized because the randomized is gonna do, it's basically going to filter in a lot of these kind of bot emails in with your regular traffic. Uh, so again, it kind of flies a little bit under the radar. But again, we're gonna assume it's a brand new account. So we're gonna go here to grow as progressive. We wanna make the warm up time about three months. So this is gonna be uh, 9th of September all the way out to 9th of December. And we wanna make sure we do this now for about two months, the 9th of September to the 9th of November. And what we wanna do is we wanna have at least one minimum sent email a day. And we wanna grow up to 40 in terms of 40 emails sent a day. And then we wanna have 30% of them get a reply rate, which 30% reply rate is really good. That's a really good signal sending back to an email service provider, but you don't want it to be 100% say, cause then that day basically uh, guarantees that they're gonna catch on to you that you're using a bot, right? 30% to 45%, you'll see that it's here. This is basically the limits of what any real human sending emails is going to do. So I leave the default settings, do it for two months. And when that's done, you're basically going to hit done. And now you just have to wait. So now it's gonna be sending emails every day and it's also gonna be responding to those emails, sending all of those good signals to your email service provider to help increase your deliverability. And the last thing that I wanna talk about in terms of email domains is going to be checking to make sure that your domain is not on any blacklists, right? You may have purchased a domain that may have previously been on a blacklist and they basically let that expire because they burned it, they got it blacklisted, and then you unknowingly may have bought in a blacklisted domain. And we wanna basically run it through a checker like MX Toolbox to make sure that it's not on any of those lists. Now let's have some fun. Let's actually look up the email m.earshot info. Let's see the deliverability on that particular email address. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to mxtoolbox.com. I'm gonna leave a link to this down below in the description. We can head over here into blacklists and basically what you're going to wanna do is type in your ascending domain. In this case, it's email m.earshot.info. Make sure it's a dot and not a comma. And then we have to hit here and go blacklist check. We're gonna hit blacklist check and what it's gonna do it's gonna check all of these known blacklists and check to see if your domain is on any of them. Registered it, I don't think that I am on any, uh, any blacklists. But again, right now there's no known blacklists that are here, which is fine. And again, you wanna see all these green check marks. This basically means that you are not on a blacklist. The last thing I want you to do too here is basically check your DMARC record as DMARCian. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description that way you don't have to type it all in. But basically what you're going to do is gonna check your DMARC record, one, to make sure that it's valid, and two, to make sure that it's working properly. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna go email m.earshot.info. I keep wanting to put a comma there. And we wanna inspect the domain and what this is gonna do, it's gonna check our DMARC record. And right now it says, great job, you have a valid DMARC that provides visibility to the entirety of your email programs. So that means I have set it up correctly. And you'll see here where it says your DMARC record, it says uh, DMARC one P equals none. That's what we put into Cloudflare before. And now that we're done talking about your email domains and your IP, which are the most important things, uh, let's move on to email subject line and body content. And just for reference, this is a very bad email subject line. This is gonna get put into spam right away. So if you're a marketer and you're selling something in the business opportunity space, it is hard enough to get into somebody's inbox, but if you're using six emojis, easy money, and then open now, uh, that's gonna get you flagged every single time. This is an example of something not to do. Again, for a number of reasons. Number one, we've got an excessive use of emojis. We've also got easy money. We've got a lot of capitalization. These are all things that you generally want to stay away from when you're writing your email subject lines. Instead, you might wanna maybe just put one emoji. Let's say we just put a check there. 
right? We want to use no more than one emoji, maybe to catch somebody's eye in there, but definitely don't use one of those GIF ones that move. The only people I've ever seen use those GIF ones that move are those people who probably cold email you porn, and that's going to get you again into fl and flagged every single time. Instead, when we write our email subject lines, we want to increase our deliverability. We want to write them as if we would write them to a friend. Something like, I thought you should see this. Basically, this is something that you would write to a friend. It invokes curiosity. We'll talk about this more during the, uh, during the copywriting lesson, but there's nothing here that's going to trigger the email spam to go to promotions because it doesn't look like a company wrote it and it doesn't look like it's a spam or scam. Subject line like this is going to be an example of something that you would do because again, it's going to get delivered. It's not going to trigger any spam. It's not going to trigger any promotions and it's going to go into the inbox and get you delivered. So when you're writing your email subject lines, you want to do something like this. I, I thought you should see this or what would you do if right? something like that, something that's good. Sometimes the ellipsis might put you into promotions, but you might, that's something that you're going to test something you're going to have to test out. And again, there's no right or wrong answer here because your email sending reputation is going to give you more or less leeway in your subject lines. Now, if I have been sending emails without a spam complaint for years, I could probably get away with that easy money, money emoji thing because the email service providers know, and I've been showing them for a number of years that, well, I've been sending good quality emails. I can get a, get away with one or two that are kind of salesy, one or two that are kind of spammy. But if you're brand new, you generally want to stay away from that stuff because you don't have the leeway provided by your reputation yet. And then finally in the body, we also want to avoid using a lot of links. Generally only have one to two links. Again, unless you have sending reputation, you can, you can buy yourself that extra leeway if you have the reputation. If you're starting out, only have one, only have maybe two links. And then also in your body content, try to stop using phrases of expires today, buy now, order here. Basically things that a company is going to use in their sales material because that's going to make it recognized as a promotion. You're not going to end up in the inbox. You're going to end up in the promotions. So when you're using it, we'll talk about this more in the copywriting section of the series, but you want to make your copy not so salesy so that it ends up in your promotions. And if you're liking what you see in this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and turn the bell on so you can be notified when the next part of the series drops. And if you want a more step-by-step -step process on how to set up your high-level account, I've left the link to a free course down in the description and in the comments. And if you want to continue the series or continue watching on the channel, I'll see you in one of these two videos.